So guess for today, this is Raffy the dog, my little pain in the butt. Um, he's gonna join me today, so hopefully he won't make too much noise. Say hi, Raffs. <coughs> yeah, you say hi. Thanks, buddy. Okay, all right. I may just let him out of this room because he may be a little pain in the today. But we're gonna start today on lesson 12. And let me get this a little bit lined up a little bit better. So we're gonna start on lesson 12, okay? Let me let him out of the room real quick. Come on, right here, yeah. All right, we just want a little moment in the spotlight. All right, so this thing says, what do you notice and what do you wonder? Okay, so it's kind of a picture. It's kind of a cool picture. Um, so it's asking you, I want you to take a minute just to kind of figure out, like, what do you think about and what do you wonder, okay? So I want you to take a minute. I'm going to write some stuff down um, that I notice, but if you can stop the video and just kind of write a few things down, that would be really helpful. Then I'm going to kind of go through it so then when you start back up, um, I can kind of go through what I noticed and what I kind of want you guys to notice, okay? All right. Let's turn the... Okay, so hopefully you turn the video off and came back on. What it kind of wants you to notice is that this whole thing starts with one little black dot in the center, okay? And if you notice that that dot branched out to three more dots, okay, which is a red, the red. And then the red, each red branched out to three green dots. Okay, three green dots. So you kind of see in the pattern now then each green dot branched out to three yellow dots. Then each yellow dot branched out to three blue dots. And that's how we get all these blue dots around there. So what that's really telling you is that it's an exponent. It's telling you that it's a number to a certain power because it's multiplying by itself. So my first one was it branched out to three. So that would be my base number, okay? This is a base number. That's what that's called, okay? Now, how many times did it do that? Well, it started with three, and then it branched out one, um, two, three, four times. So one, two, three, and then four times, okay? So that's three to the fourth power, which is three times three, times three, times three, okay? Remember, it's not three times four. Don't do times four. That means three, the base number. This is your exponent. And it's saying that I multiplied three four times. Not I multiplied three times four. I multiplied out three four different times. So if I did three times three, okay? Here's my first three. That was the red threes, okay? My second threes, the three times three is nine. That's how many green dots I had. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? Three times three times three gave me 27. Because nine times three is 27. That's how many yellow dots there were. Okay? And then if I did the last one times three, I got 81. And if you count them, that's how many blue dots there will be. Okay? So it's kind of showing you that this is what an ex something that's exponential will look like. Can you imagine if I did a three dots on every blue, how fast that's going to add up, okay? Or how fast it's going to multiply out, not add up. So if I did three on every green thing, what I'm really doing is multiplying 81 times three. And then if I did three on that one, it would be that number times three. So it's just kind of giving you a picture wise on what an exponent does, okay? Now, your base number on an exponent, that is the number you are multiplying, okay? That's what a base number is. A base number is the number that gets multiplied. That's very important. It gets multiplied. That's this number, the three, okay? Your exponent, however, is the number of times it gets multiplied. So my exponent, which in this case was four, this is gonna be the number of times I multiply the base number by itself. Which sounds confusing, but I'm gonna explain it. You multiply base number 
by itself. Okay, that just means that I'm gonna take my base number three and do it four times. So I'm gonna do three times three times three times three. This can't be plus, this has to be multiplication. Exponents go quick, okay? You know, it's like three times three is nine, that's not bad. Then it jumps to 27, then it'll jump to 81, then it'll jump to 243, then it'll jump to 729. So they, they jump up very quickly. So what I really want you to get out of this part is that this is your base number, okay? Base number, that's the number that gets multiplied. Your exponent, which is that little number, has to be little, is the number of times you multiply that base number, okay? So in other words, if I did, so a different example might be, if I did, um, let's say, five to the fourth power, okay? What that means is by base number is five, I'm gonna multiply it by itself four times. So I'm gonna have four fives right now. It is not five times four. Okay, that is a, such a common mistake. Okay, this isn't 20. I'm gonna tell you how fast that goes because right now, five times five is 25. I've already bypassed the five times four. Okay, so I would do five times five, which is 25. Then I'm going to bring down, take 25 times 5, which is 125. And then I put my last 5 in, which is 625. Okay? Huge difference between the numbers 625 and 20. Okay? So just so you understand what an exponent is, it's a number multiplied by itself, however many times the exponent tells you. Okay? And that picture here is really showing you how that works okay kind of like um if you tell one friend something and then you tell them it's a secret and then they tell two of their friends and their friends tell two of their friends after a while everybody in the world knows okay so it's kind of the same thing all right let's go on to the next page it says you find a brass bottle that looks really old when you rub some dirt off the bottle a genie appears maybe not the genie offers you a reward. You must choose one, either $50,000 or a magical $1 coin. The coin will turn itself into two coins on the first day. The two coins will turn into four coins on the second day. The four coins will double on the next day and be eight, and it keeps going on and on and on for 28 days. Okay, so this is going to take some work. So what it's saying is that the number of coins on the third day will be two times two, times two, which is two to the third power. I have a base of two, I multiplied it three times, okay? So if I multiply that out, I get two times two is four, that's four, and then four times two is eight. So on the third day, you're gonna have eight coins. Right now it's looking like $50,000 would be your way better option, right? But we're gonna keep going, okay? This next question says, what do two to the fifth power and two to the sixth power represent in that situation? Okay, if this was the third day, what do you think two to the fifth power and two to the sixth power would represent? Okay, so this is gonna be your fifth day and this is gonna be your sixth day, okay? Fifth day, it doubled. This is gonna be the sixth day it doubled. Okay. Now it says evaluate two to the fifth and two to the sixth without a calculator. Okay. That means multiply it out. You have to write these out. You cannot do these in your head. You're going to lose track. Okay. So if I want to do two to the fifth, I'm going to write out five twos and multiply them. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Here's how I do it so I don't get messed up and I don't forget which ones I've done. I underline them. This one's four times, I'm gonna bring down this two, okay? That gives me eight. Now I'm gonna bring down this two. That gives me 16. And then I would bring down this two. Okay, so on the fifth day, I'm gonna have $32. Still not looking like $50,000 is a bad option to take. 
but I'm only on the fifth day, okay? Now, if I want the sixth day, I don't have to redo this whole problem. I just have to say, okay, here was five twos. Now I want one more two, okay? So I'm gonna take this and multiply it by two. And right now I'm at $64. Yeah, still looking at like the 50,000 is gonna be pretty good option, okay? But it's asking me on the next question, how many days would it take for the number of magical coins to exceed 50,000? All right, we're gonna figure this out pretty quickly. And of course you would do this part on a calculator because you wouldn't wanna multiply this many out, but we're gonna do that, okay? We're right now at the sixth day, okay? I'm not gonna redo all that. We know that the sixth day was 64, okay? On the seventh day, I would multiply that by two because it doubles every day. So that would give me 128, okay? So I'm gonna make a little bit of a chart. So I'm gonna have six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I have no idea how many days it's gonna take. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Let's see how far 16 days will take us. All right, so we said at the sixth day we were at one, we were at 64. On the seventh day, I multiplied that by two and I got 128. All right, if I do 128 times two, okay, I'm gonna get 16. I'm gonna get 100, 100, two times one is not one. I'm gonna get 256. So right now I'm at $256. Still nowhere near um, 50,000, right? All right, so on the ninth day, I'm gonna multiply my 256 by two. Okay, I'm gonna get 12, 10, 11. Two times two is four plus one is five. Now I'm at $512. Starting to get interesting. Okay, still nowhere near 50,000, but I'm getting up there. All right, if I do 5,000 or 512 times two, I'm gonna get 1,024, okay? I'm just kind of doubling it in my head. If I do 1,024 times two, I'm gonna get 2,048, okay? If I do 2,048 times two, I'm gonna have to do my math somewhere. 2,048, I should have brought a calculator with me, times two, I get 16, that's nine, zero, two times two is four. Now I'm at $4,096, okay? So I'm about halfway through the month. Multiply that by two. I get 12, 18, 19, one, two times four is eight. Now I'm at $8,000, huh? Okay, what about day 14? I'm gonna double that amount. I get four, 18, two times one is two, three, it's $16,384. I'm getting a little closer to that 50,000 mark. What if I multiply this by two? Two times four is eight. Two times eight is 16. Okay, my one. Two times three is six plus one is seven. Two times six is 12. Okay, my one. Two times two, three. Now I'm at, on the 15th day, I'm at 32,768. All right, let's multiply that guy by two. Okay, two times eight is 16, carry on my one. Two times six is 12, plus one is 13, carry on my one. That's 14, that's 15, carry on my one. Two times two is four, plus one is five. Two times three is six. At the 16th day, I've exceeded my $50,000. I've got 65,536, okay? Now, I could keep going on that for the next, till I get to 28 days. And you can go ahead and do that, okay? You would just say, keep your chart going. I'm not gonna go through all the math because that would take forever on the video. But if you made a chart, date 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, you're gonna see how much money, um, way, way, way exceeding $50,000, okay? So you get the idea. So what it's telling me here is that two to the 16th power is 65,536, 65, okay? Now, think about it. If I go two to the 17th, thou, two to the 17th power, I'm gonna double that. That's gonna be about 130,000. 
double that, it's going to be 260,000. So you see how fast it grows, okay? Figure out the 28 days. I think you'll be amazed at how much money you would get if you took a dollar coin and doubled it every day for 28 days, okay? I'm going to have you do that, though. All right, let's go on this page. All right, it says, are you ready for more? You could try this, okay? It's saying, and I'm going to start it with you, and I'm going to have you do it because it would take a little bit of time to go through this. A scientist grows a colony of bacteria in a Petri dish. She knows that the bacteria are growing and that the number of bacteria doubles every hour, okay? When she leaves the lab at 5 p.m., there are 100 bacteria in the dish. When she comes back the next morning, the dish is completely full of bacteria. At what time was the dish half, half full? I want you to think about this. If it doubles every hour, so it's 9 a.m. And this Petri dish, that's my Petri dish, is full of bacteria, full of bacteria. What did it look like at 8 a.m.? Oops, my Petri dish got a little bigger, but you get the idea. All right, if it doubles every hour, that means at 8 a.m., it was only half full. Because if I double this, I'm gonna get this, no matter what the thing is. So what time was the dish half full? 8 a.m. I don't even care how many times it doubled. I know that it doubles every time. At 10 p.m., I'm gonna, or 10 a.m., I'm gonna have two petri dishes full, because that would double, okay? So that's what it's telling you to do. All right, on this one. Here are some expressions. All of them but one equals 16, all right? Now, if we multiply this out, I want you to think about it. 2 to the third times 2. So that's 2 to the third, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay? 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. That one worked. 4 to the second power means I have a base of 4 times it by itself twice. Four times four is 16. That one worked. If I have two to the fifth power divided by two. Now there's a couple ways I could do this. I'm gonna show you one of them. So this would be two times two times two times two times two. That's two to the fifth divided by two. Okay, remember when we cross reduce, I could multiply this out and divide it, but I could say two goes into two once. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 1 is 16. Hmm, this one looks like it could be 16, but let's figure it out. Does this mean 8 times 2? Hopefully you said no. This means 8 times 8, not 8 times 2. 8 times 8 is 64. This one does not equal 16, so this is the one that didn't work, okay? So you've got to be very careful. Looking at that problem, it looks like it would be 16, but I want you to make sure you write them all out. I don't care if it's 2 to the second power, write 2 times 2. If it's 3 to the third power, write 3 times 3 times 3, okay? You have to write them out. All right, this one says write three expressions containing exponents so, so that each expression equals 81. All right, the easiest one, hopefully we know, is because we know our nine times tables, then nine times nine equals 81. Okay, so that would be nine to the second power. Base nine, I did it twice. All right, if I think about this, okay, I could do threes. Does nine go into, or three goes into nine, right? Three times three, three goes here, three times three, so that one should be three to the one, two, three, fourth power. Okay? All I did is separate my nines out. I said one nine is three times three. That nine is three times three. They're all three, so I can write it as an exponent at a base of three. I multiplied it out four times. All right, the one that's not quite as obvious. Anything to the first power, okay? I could write this as 81 to the first power. That literally means I had 181, okay? So that would be, so this is one way I could write it, 9 squared. This is another way I could write it, 3 to the fourth power. This is a third way I could write it, 
any number, write this down, raised to the first power is itself. I'm going to say power of one. Is itself. All that means is if I did two to the first power, it equals two. Okay? All right. There is your beginner lesson on exponents. Here is your lesson summary. So that should help you. And it kind of is showing you how to, let's see if there's another page on here, so I forgot. Um, it's also showing you like how to say things. Um, in other words, if I have two to the fifth, I say, we can say two raised to the power of five, or I can say two to the fifth power, or just two to the fifth, okay? They all mean the same thing, okay? If it says if n is a positive whole number, that just means that it's greater than zero and that um, it's not like a decimal or fraction. One other thing I almost forgot is that any number raised to zero power, okay, and I'm going to go more into this later, but you need to know this, any number raised to the zero power is not zero. It's going to be one to zero power is one, okay? So if I had 15 to the zero power, it's going to equal 1. If I had 1 to the 0 power, it's going to equal 1. If I had 8 to the 0 power, it's going to equal 1. Okay? So that's just showing you that any number raised to the 0, and it'll follow a pattern. And I will show you that pattern later. I just want you to think about it right now. And then when we do a little bit more with exponents, I will show that to you. All right. Have a fabulous time. I hope you guys are enjoying your time at home. I miss seeing everybody. Bye.